All right, well, we looked at how to graph cosecant. Now we're going to take some time to graph secant. And uh, the process you'll see is very much the same, so this should be a little quicker. Um, now, we note that cos uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And so graphing this accurately is going to depend on our ability to graph cosine accurately. So I'm going to graph in light yellow the cosine graph, which we all should know how to do at this point. I'm going to try to do it like lightly because this is just again like a, a crutch to help us graph cosecant. All right, and we'll fill out the table because we did last time just to again remind ourselves of the relationship between secant and cosine. So we're taking the reciprocal, right? These are the values of cosine at these x values. So I'm going to take the reciprocals. Reciprocal of 1 is 1. Negative root 2, undefined. Negative root 2, negative 1. Negative root 2, undefined. Okay. <clears throat> now, like we do with cosecant, uh, we're going to note that whenever cosine is 0, for instance, at... Um, at pi over 2, there's going to be an asymptote for secant because secant is undefined when cosine is 0. So I'm going to put my vertical asymptotes in these locations. Okay, so now I got my asymptotes. Now, whenever cosine is zero uh, is, is one, rather cosine is one, so is secant, and whenever cosine is negative one, so is secant. And notice those happen here, here, okay. And then we do some some analysis on what's happening you know, in between, for instance, negative pi over two and zero. The cosine uh, values are all less than 1. And when you take the reciprocals of numbers that are less than 1, you get numbers bigger than 1. So, um, for instance, the reciprocal of this y value, whatever it is, it could be like a millionth or a thousandth, the reciprocal of that is going to be a thousand. So the secant graph is going to be way up here, right? And as our fractions get closer to 1, you know, like 9 tenths, then those reciprocals are not quite as big, right? Ten ninths is just a little more than one. And so, as with the cosecant graph, we get this shape as a result. Okay, again with the arrows. Okay. Uh, notice, by the way, the period of secant and cosecant. The period is uh, 2 pi, right? And again, think about this. Here's an asymptote. We've got a, a u facing up, a u facing down, and then another asymptote. And at this point, we're going to be starting with the u facing up. That's cosecant. Uh, so the period's 2 pi for cosecant and secant as they are for cosine and sine. Uh, we can we can erase this yellow because again that was just a crutch to help us sketch the secant graph. Good. And now let's focus on describing the domain. As with cosecant, we're going to describe the main the, the domain this way. The domain is all x values except so except for when x equals so when x doesn't equal. Now we're going to describe the asymptotes in a mathematically concise way. And the way to do that is to find one asymptote. So pi over 2, there's one. And then there's one here at 3 pi over 2, right? So what's that distance? 
Well, 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2, that's pi. So if we go to a multiple of pi, if we add 1 pi, we'll get to another asymptote. If we add 2 pi's, we'll get to another one. 3 pi's, we'll get to another one. So if we add multiples of pi, we're going to get more asymptotes, as long as n is an integer. Okay. Uh, the range is the same as for cosecant. Uh, x-intercepts, there are no x-intercepts, and the asymptotes we just described. So when x equals pi over 2 plus multiples of pi. And again, I, I, the analogy, like I said before, is like when you, we did those links in Algebra 1, you know, you Joe joins a gym and it costs them, you know, pi over $2 to join, and then pi dollars every month, what's his total cost? pi over 2 plus pi n. We're doing the same thing. We're describing the asymptotes because they're spread evenly apart. So we find one, and then we say they go up by multiples of, of pi. Uh, and local extrema we're not going to deal with right now. Okay. So again, I think this, hopefully that was a pretty painless way to graph the secant function, but pay attention to writing the domain and the asymptotes correctly. That's where a lot of students get uh, get confused.